Crossovers have always been such a huge thing in comic books, and I think it's a great thing to breed two worlds into one to let two fan bases meet and shake hands. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not so great, but either way, it usually mends itself to being something of interest, maybe even just a fun read rather than an in-depth story. And that's what I found when I read Spawn and Batman. Now, I had this when I was a kid. Um, I finally just got it back. I actually got both of them, Spawn and Batman and Spawn and Batman War Devils. And I gotta say, it was a really fun read. I think there's a lot of things in this that are just a little strange the way Batman acts He actually kind of comes off as a total asshole in this while spawn isn't exactly up to par with his comic book side But he is played just a little bit better All right, Batman is kind of done dirty if you will in this now This is actually done by Frank Miller the story uh, He wrote Sin City and a bunch of other really iconic comic books, but the main one is Sin City You've probably seen the movie. I know I have I've never actually read the Sin City comic books But I know there is a huge fan him for that. And his work with Todd McFarlane was something that I was really, really excited to see. Todd McFarlane's art, his cape work, all of this, has always been one of my all-time favorites in comic book history. Between his action figures, the Spawn comic books, the Spider-Man comic books, he's actually has quite the career. He actually booted up Image Comics itself, which is by far one of my favorite comic book distributors that I can really think of. I think they come up with some really awesome one-shot stories, and I would have to say at least 60% of these are all Image Comics. And to say the least, I'm very excited to show you guys Spawn and Batman. This came out in like 1993 or 97, I want to say. It's either a couple of years younger than me or just one year older than me. And what can I say? Like I said, it was a fun read. Now where this all starts out is you're going to see Batman dropping down from this ledge next to these docks, all right, he's trying to scope out these bandits, these local hoodlums, and he wants to just eliminate them from the area, you know, but not not too harshly, right? Batman doesn't hurt people. Well, there's some things in this that are going to highly contradict this that I thought were absolutely hilarious. A cold night, a dark night, an unforgiving wind, a merciless city, Gotham, the lapping of briny waves against rotted wooden floor, startled curses, muffled gunshots, horrid pounding, shrieks of pain, dull moans, near silence. Inside a warehouse, salty smells of blood and sweat, a silent shadow of a man, a cold night, a dark night. And we are greeted with the Batman. Now, Todd McFarlane's version of him is very cool, all right? He's got the giant billowing cape of 60 feet of fabric behind him just soaring off into the wind. <laughs> Something that I always found is so ridiculous, but uh, he is here. He has a bloody shoulder, and he is not doing so well, all right? He must have already been in a bit of a tussle, but he is finally where he needs to be. He's looking around, and he says to him, Punks, you're lucky I went on you so easy. Tonight's foes and I left behind him broken, but the true horror lies ahead. Weapons sold by agents of a fallen dictatorship to Gotham street gangs. Weapons built for a war that never happened. Guns, grenades, rocket launchers, and strange high-tech devices that hint at the smaller horrors that would have followed the nuclear nightmare. And suddenly, Batman looks down to see this in a crate. He sees a pair of battle gloves, a piece of technology that will bolster any man into the likes of Bane, all right? These aren't just like power gloves from Fallout. They actually hook into your nervous system, and they pump you full of adrenaline, and they make your entire body strong, and not just your ever-loving hammering fists. But when he grabs these, a giant robot crashes through the fucking wall. He doesn't even know what to do about this. Batman is just a man, remember? And this robot is made of pure steel. He is sent flying away, he gets decked in the face, and he suddenly realizes that he is in for a lot over his head. And he decides, you know, I really need to bring some tactics about this. I need to stay slow, I need to stay conscious, and I need to ignore the pain. And he slips on one of these battle gloves, and he starts making work of this robot. He's punching it, he's kicking it, he's doing the old Adam West shimmy. And finally, he does crack into the steel of this robot. And underneath a glass plate, he sees a singular eyeball sitting there. And along that eyeball, some words. A man from inside, screaming, I don't know where I am. Somebody help me. Dear God, I can't feel my legs. And he suddenly realizes that there is a man strapped into this thing. This is more of a cyborg than robot. Uh, somebody has had their free will absolutely stripping from him. And he realizes that he mustn't utterly destroy this thing. He just needs to destroy the outside and try to achieve this man and try and save his life. 
and that is exactly what he does. After a few more poundings of the steel shell around it, he actually encapsulates the head. He grabs it, he pulls as hard as he can, and the head detaches from the robot. There is no body here, just a mere old man's head connected to some gizmos below. And this head is still screaming out, you know, I can't, I can't feel my legs. I have no idea what's going on. Dear God, somebody help me. Then the earth trembles, and the air turns to fire, and what was once a man is only a piece of evidence. And from here we're greeted with this lady called Dr. Margaret Love. Now what she does is she kind of runs homeless facilities all over the world, and what she is all about is changing attitudes, giving people joy, giving them the necessary means to change the workings of their mind, alright? To actually make them want change, to make them actually need something different in their life. And she comes off as a great person, but she's at this award ceremony receiving this award, and it says, And it came as no surprise that Dr. Margaret Love, founder and president of Heal the World, was awarded the Lambier Prize for humanitarian achievement. Her work has only begun, said Dr. Love. I accept this offer, not in my own name, but on behalf of the thousands of caring and sharing volunteers who have brought the rewards of self-actualization, empowerment, and attitude adjustment to the disenfranchised of our troubled planet. End scene, we are now back in the Batcave, and right off the bat, there's some things in here that I really just had no idea. Batman kind of comes off as a bit of a child, a bit of a man-child. He has a giant penny, a giant T-Rex, a giant Joker playing card. Now, I'm sure if I had a little more knowledge about older Batman comics from before the 90s, I'd probably understand where these are coming from. But it was just kind of weird to see he has these, like, toys down in the Batcave. But Batman is here to investigate this head that he's found. He needs to figure out where the hell these weapons are coming in from. He knows that they're USSR, but he doesn't know who exactly is giving all the street gangs of Gotham these weapons. And suddenly, Alfred walks into the room, and he says, I took the liberty of preparing her tea for you, Master Bruce. It's chamomile, the tea that is utterly renowned for relieving stress and vigilantes suffering from obsessive disorder. Not right now, Alfred. Just patch up my shoulder. The blood's getting in my way. And that's about the best Batman voice that I can do. My voice is already a little bit raspy. I've had a bit of a sinus infection, so I think that's gonna help my voice work here. Very good, sir. But you might consider removing your cowl so as to facilitate my efforts. After all, you've no need to conceal your identity here. And Batman actually says something kind of interesting, something a little self-exposing. He says, sometimes I'm more comfortable with the mask on. And he looks back at the head on this pedestal, and he's saying no fingerprints, there's nothing to identify besides the teeth, and eventually he does have his computer scan these teeth. Now, while all this is happening, uh, Alfred just kind of keeps on trying to give him this tea. He, he wants Bruce to just relax, you know? But he's always just so uptight, he's always trying to just beat the shit out of people, and he's concerned, alright? He's concerned that this man is actually maybe going insane, or becoming into something a little more sinister. They say chamomile is sure to prevent nightmares, and Batman says, I don't get nightmares. I give them. And you can tell Alfred is kind of sick of this shit. He, he has heard all the one-liners, and he says, No need for punchlines, sir. You're among friends. And suddenly, on the computer, records finally display themselves. Luis Bacchus, age 42, vagrant, acute alcoholic, last seen 42nd Street Mission, mid-Manhattan. Presumed dead. And Batman basically has his next lead. He takes these newfound power gloves in the head. He tells Alfred, put this on ice and put these in my secret vault and just get out of here with your chamomile tea. I do not want it. I do not need it. I don't drink tea, goddammit. And suddenly Batman is off to the Big Apple, to New York City, to become, to become a star kid. <laughs> the hunt begins, but very soon a woman's scream splits the night, and Batman remembers a little boy who watched in horror and disbelief as a mugger's bullet tore through the flesh and bone of Thomas and Martha Wayne, and he knows the hunt must wait, if only for a moment. And suddenly the news broadcast pops up, and they're reporting that the bat signal is now being seen in New York City. People are realizing that the man of Gotham has finally arrived and that maybe he can do some good for this place. Maybe he can take away some of these torturous people plaguing this apple to strip the worms from the core, as one might say. And Batman is just kind of flying everywhere. Uh, you really get a grasp for Todd McFarlane's art here when you look at the ropes. And obviously his giant wind-waving cape. It's just, it's absolutely ridiculous. And Todd McFarlane's art is just very iconic and something that I've always really appreciated. But Batman, from a distant alleyway, hears a group of homeless people talking. They say, I had it all, but I forsake the materialism of our age and found spiritual enlightenment. Pass that bottle, will ya? I saw it, man! There was Al! A hole right through him, still standing there like he didn't notice. 
Next thing I knew, that other guy was toast. And when Batman hears this, he starts thinking, you know, I'm just hearing sob stories and outright nonsense, and none of these people actually know what they're talking about. But when you cut to the next page, we are greeted with Spawn himself, the great demon from hell, the soldier of Satan. He is a dead man brought to wretched life, a slave of hell who seeks redemption, and some of his friends are missing. And you see Spawn looking down at these two gentlemen walking towards another homeless man in this lone alleyway, and these guys are very weird, alright? One of them just basically says do it the entire time. He does say this about ten times as the other man's just like, oh man, you're gonna, you're gonna freak out when you see what happens, alright? This guy, he's not even waking up. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this gasoline on top of his head, and uh, we're just gonna straight up light him on fire. And when they try to proceed to do this, what happens is the flames, instead of lighting this man on fire, they actually go all the way around him. And these two men are kind of freaking out, you know? They're like, this, this isn't how fire works. This isn't how gasoline works. I've lit plenty of people on fire, and this has never once happened. This must be magic, my friend. And suddenly, Spawn swoops loops down, and he says, yes, magic. Magic brewed in the depths of hell, which is where you two are going unless you give me a damn good reason not to send you there. And one of the guys finally says, dust this freak, and they actually try to. They shoot him in the chest about three times, they shoot him in the shoulders, but you just see bolt holes going through the bad boy that is Spawn. If this is not working, Spawn actually tells me, no, you're, you're being ridiculous. And what he actually does is he powers up his everlasting hell powers into his fists, and he sends these absolute scumbags down, 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 into the pits of hell. <laughs> and Batman is overlooking this from atop another rooftop. And I'm so sorry if I'm incredibly sweaty. This light in front of me is just so fucking hot. It's a already hot day. It's like 85. And I'm in this closed off room. So I can only imagine this camera is going to overheat at some point. But anyways, yes, Batman sees this. And he's thinking, this man is an absolute murderer. He has no context for the situation. And on top of that, he doesn't kill people, alright? He would rather break every vertebrae in their fucking body. <laughs> Which is not far off. We're getting there, all right? I'm not being ridiculous. A wanton act of murder. And he swoops down, crashing his fucking heel right into the kidney of Spawn. And he says, you must be Al. Spawn goes crashing to the floor. It doesn't really help him. Figuring, you know, he does have all the powers of hell within him. And he is actually an anti-superhero. Whatever you want to call him while Batman is just a man. And Batman's thinking, there's one good thing about murderers. You don't feel bad about taking a cheap shot at him. Like getting a good momentum from a 30-foot drop and driving a heel into the murderer's kidney. Shouldn't cause too much damage. Six months in the hospital and he'll be ready to face the judge. You see that? Alright? Batman finally admits it. He's trying to create these people. He is not holding back. He knows that as long as they live, he can keep telling people he doesn't kill people. Well, I think that's a load of shit, Batman. I think that is just absolutely wrong. I think half the time these people would rather be dead than to be absolutely crippled for the rest of their lives. And Spawn suddenly says, this is my turf, Batman. Back off! Impossible this hell. He should be just the side of crippled. He says it. He says it. But he pivots expertly, delivering a kick of his own that makes all the air leave Batman in a rush. And suddenly, they are in this huge battle. Batman throws him against the wall. He's punching him in the head. And Spawn is basically just laying there this entire time, you know, just thinking, come on, dude, like, I got I got stuff to do. And obviously, you're, you're not doing anything to me. Batman pulls out some of his batarangs, and he actually starts throwing them. Spawn deflects them with his chains like they're nothing. He says, knock it off, Batman. I'm not in the mood, and I don't have the time. Got the time for this, punk? And Batman kicks him again. Another kick at that slab of granite. The spine of a man would shatter. But he isn't even breathing hard. Breathing, that's it. Whatever he is, he still breathes. He still needs to breathe. There's a reason you carry your utility belt, you idiot. And he pulls out a thing of nerd gas. And he tosses it over at the spawn, alright? He's trying to use enough for a mob of people. Enough to put them all down at once. And spawn is coughing, alright? This does actually affect him. And Batman goes on once again, alright? He's kicking, he's punching. And some of the scenes in this are absolutely hilarious. I will get a close-up of this one right here. I think this is so so funny the way Batman's just sitting there. He's like, he's literally like, <laughs> he's just doing everything he can possibly do to defeat the soldier of hell, just being a mere man. 
but it does not work. It feels like cheating, thinks Spawn. It is cheating, using the magic to make himself strong, to beat the crap out of Batman. And suddenly Batman realizes this man is way incredibly stronger than me, and I may have just dipped down into something I might not have wanted to touch in the first place. And Spawn basically does uh, just kick the shit out of Batman, all right? And Batman runs away. He says, I'll be back, all right, you little punk. Count your blessings. I let you off so easy. And suddenly it shows Batman sitting in this alleyway, all right? He's trying to teach himself how to breathe. He's twisting his spine back and forth in order to get it back in place. He slips his shoulder back into its socket, all right? This man has been obviously beat hardcore. And as he's trying to breathe, he tries to push away the humiliation of being beaten so badly and so easily. He knows that the spawn was holding back this entire time. Meanwhile, the building old and crumbling, the door looks like it would break if you just leaned against it. Back when Al was a soldier, back when he was alive, Al Simmons could pick one of these beauties in a flat 10 seconds. Now it takes him 12. A junkie named Silvio led spawn here. He seemed to know something. You can check in, said Silvio, but you can never check out. Spawn opens this door and suddenly a ginormous gun is held to the back of his head. And he actually has the time to do some sweet ass summer flips out of there. All right, he's, he's dodging, he's jumping, and suddenly he pulls up the powers of hell once again in this giant, awesome green looking orb, blasting it to utter pieces. And falling from within is another one of these cyborg heads, another man. And he actually recognizes this head. He says, Chuck? Chuck, what the hell? Who did this? To you, pal. Chuck can't really say anything. He's just ahead at this point. All he can say is, I don't know where I am, and I can't feel my legs. And it seems that there might be a pattern here. And suddenly a TV from behind him turns on, and it says, my dear friends, and it is Dr. Margaret Love. You've worked so very hard. All these months, I'm so very proud of you. You are ready now. The final stage of your rehabilitation begins. Prepare to shed your poisoned bodies and become perfect servants of society, free from guilt and pain, free from choice. And suddenly it is revealed that Dr. Margaret Love is actually taking all these homeless people, putting them into these cyborgs to alleviate them from the tedious life of free will. The thing that keeps bringing them back to the drink, to making poor decisions, and she wants to just turn them into social servants for everybody else. She thinks this will be a better life, but very obviously, she is just extremely evil. And Spawn actually recognizes her for back from when he was a soldier, and this lady is actually a demon. It says her voice is like music, hypnotizing. Then, like a thunderclap, a fragment of memory. The memory of Al Simmons. On some ghastly foreign battlefield, she was smiling. Men screamed and died, and she was smiling. And suddenly, Spawn can feel his body vibrate with the powers from hell. And he does nothing to hold this back. He blasts through the sides of the walls of this building, and it crumbles down, down into the ground. And suddenly, we are back with Batman. And he says the punk was holding back. Don't dwell on it. Patch yourself up, you'll be ready when duty calls. And Batman sees a bat signal out in the mid-New York City, and he is kind of ecstatic about it. He actually says, you know, this is a little weird, seeing uh, my franchise out here in the Big Apple, you know? This is this is awesome. My network is growing. McFarlane toys are gonna be through the fucking roof this quarter. <laughs> and he arrives at the signal, and who do you know? Dr. Margaret Love is here to greet him. She says, the security camera spotted the thing that did this, Batman. It was all red cape and chains. It reduced my beautiful mission to rubble. Oh, Batman, all my dreams are in your hands, and now I fear it will go worse. Tonight, a fundraiser aboard the Heal the World ship. It's rumored the president may attend. If anything should happen, and Batman cuts her off, and he's like, he will be stopped, Doctor. He won't get anywhere near your ship. I got you, and actually says that Batman's feeling a little bit of desire for this lady. And now if you remember what I just said, she kind of has a hypnotizing voice. So Batman, you know, he already doesn't like Spawn at this point, but he is all about this. And if he can get maybe a date for once in his life, that will be cool too. But he's still thinking to himself, the punk was holding back. Batman has to even the odds. A phone call to Alfred, and two hours later, a package is delivered, and Batman is ready. And we are now back with the spawn. He's in his home alleyway. He's among his friends. Spawn actually is a very good man. He helps out the homeless around the city, and because of this, he actually knows all the dirty little secrets that are happening around the towns around him. And this has always been kind of a huge thing 
sitting in the Spawn comic books, but he's sitting in this alleyway, coughing his brains out. This nerve gas is actually getting to him at a rate that he has never experienced before. And one of the men just kind of tells me, no, you need, just cough it out, all right? And just be thankful that you don't feel like this. Most of us feel this way every single days of our lives. And he says, you know, that is true, all right? I will, I'll, I'll quit my, I'll quit my whining about it, sir. Thank you. And he says, the creep who did this to me, Batman. If he's not an idiot, he's learned his lesson. And none of these people around him believe him, all right? They say, Batman, right. You tell the best stories, Al. And he says, it's not just a story. It was the Batman. And if he's working for that Nadia Vladova or Margaret Love or whatever she's calling herself these days, then he's not the hero everybody says he is. And one of the homeless men says, kind of like Elseworlds, huh? And this I really loved. Elseworlds is a series of comics that um, are like multiversal kind of things. There's actually one where Batman becomes the Green Lantern. There's one where he becomes a vampire. There's just a whole bunch of just like what if type style things. I've never gotten to read these yet, but I've seen them and they look really fantastic. The artwork in those look very, very cool. And one of the men says, what are you talking about, Mick? Hey, look up in the sky. And suddenly you see this giant bat-shaped shadow descending upon the spawn. He looks up, and who is it? It's Batman, with that power glove that he found in the beginning. And right off the bat, he punches spawn right in the head and bashes him into the concrete. The power of the gloves, it streams through Batman. He can laugh at the wounds that just hours ago left him helpless. And most delightful of all, he faces an opponent who can take a whole world of punishment. No need for the usual restraint. And again, a couple more funny poses from Batman. He actually he looks a little bit like Harvey Birdman in this, but uh, he takes a kick at Spawn's head and he's crashed to the ground. Spawn gets up and he grabs him by the chest and he says, idiot, you're an idiot, I'll tear you apart. And this is a part of the comic book that I didn't really care too much for. It's cool seeing Batman and Spawn fight, but I much more would have preferred them to work more as a team throughout the whole thing, which inevitably they will, but not after like a bunch of basically like playground level insults, all right, where Spawn's just calling him an idiot and Batman's just kind of calling him an undisciplined fighter because he's using magic and things like that and it just comes off real ridiculous. Batman even says, in your dreams. And they're just fighting, all right? Punching and kicking and magic and all these different things are colliding together. And Spawn's just screaming, I'll break you in half. I'll break you in half. Batman says, sloppy fighter, stupid fighter, no discipline. Spawn's just getting very angry. He says, talking trash? You're talking trash? It won't help you. And the big thing around this seems to be that Spawn repeats himself twice in a lot of these dialogue things. I've never really seen this occur in the original Spawn comics, but it's it's what's happening here. And Batman just continues to say, you know, no discipline, stupid fighter, stupid punk. I've also never heard Batman say punk since maybe the Adam West days. And once again, the Spawn repeats himself. He says, you've had it. You had it. You're done. Just warming up, you stupid punk. And they just keep punching and kicking and nothing's really happening until they're both like kind of just tuckered out and they kind of both crawl to different sides of this alleyway and they're both just sitting there talking shit. Batman says, give up, punk. You're finished. Just look at you. You're finished. Look at you. You can't even get up. You're the one who's finished. I'll rip you to pieces, undisciplined slob. Catch my breath, just catch my breath and I'll break you in half. And as they're both talking shit, what do you know? One of these mysterious cyborgs creeps up from behind them and it just starts pulverizing Batman into the ground, all right? He's caught totally off guard. Spawn is a little too tired to actually fight back in the moment and he's just kind of watching this happen. Well, it is very a gritty scene, all right? You actually see Batman bleeding from everywhere. One of these cyborgs it distends or extends one of his posts from his arms and and he stabs Batman directly in the shoulder, and it says an artery bursts, a mortal wound. As Batman feels a final coldness, he hears the wet sounds of what they do to him. And Spawn's just sitting there, he's saying, killing him. Christ, they're killing him. Spawn reaches deep within himself to find the strength, to find the will to rise, and he reaches all the way to hell to find the power. And he says, I just hope you will appreciate this, Batman. And even as Batman is being killed, literally murdered in the streets, he says, stupid punk, undisciplined. <laughs> doesn't want the help. It's a classic Batman, like, just trying to ward off Superman from helping him with the city. Uh, he just doesn't want it, alright? He's humiliated, as he said before. But as Batman lay there dying, these robots are completely obliterated as you see this giant atomic green wave wash over their cold-hearted steel. And it's pretty messed up, but you gotta say, when I see this little image of, like, Bruce Wayne's cheeks all popped up, it's very cartoony. I think Spawn definitely got the better artwork in this over Batman. Batman is cool, but with his cowl and things like that, he just doesn't come off as realistic as Spawn actually does. 
does. But a spawn is standing over top of him, and as Batman is still talking his shit, he says, you're not making sense. You're in shock. It looks really bad. His heart stops. There's no blood left in him. It would take a miracle to save him. And Spawn takes his hands, and suddenly he's waving this giant blue orb above him. And he sends it plummeting into the Batman's brain. He's inside of his consciousness. And Batman says, what are you doing? All right, Batman is dead at this point. Spawn is actually bringing him back to life. And he says, saving your life and dropping in for a visit. Get out of my head. Hear that, Batman? That's your heartbeat. You didn't have one for a while there. You're welcome. And Batman just does not like this. He's actually calling him a twit. Have you ever heard Batman use the word twit? I don't think so, alright? I don't think so. I could do that, but then I just have to beat the crap out of you all over again. And they just keep talking shit, and I don't want to have to repeat everything out of this, so I'll just leave that all to you to read this yourself on that part. And eventually Spawn tells me, no, no, I'm not getting out of your head until we've had a little chat. Swapped a few stories, traded a few pieces of each other. He needs to swap some memories with this man, so he'll stop just trying to fight him for basically no reason other than an out-of-context murder, alright? Right? These things happen, Batman just needs to chill out. And you get this great artwork of them melding minds. You get to see Spawn without the mask and Batman. They're terrified, alright? They both had some... Well, actually, Spawn is actually literally from hell and was gunned down by his fellow soldiers. Well, Batman just watched his parents die, so that's kind of ridiculous that they're both, like, kind of like, even Spawn's like, man, you've had it bad. <laughs> it's like, bro, you literally came from the bellies of Satan himself. But Batman seeing everything else Simmons did when he was a soldier, and he says, murder. You're a murderer a hundred times over. You're detestable. And he says, I was a soldier. I fought and died. I wasn't some rich kid with a hang up about bats. A soldier facing bullets. Bullets, your parents, and he actually sees Batman's parents being gunned down. And Batman just wants him out of his head, and he says, not until you know. Look at her, Batman. Listen to the soldiers gibber like idiots and scream and die. That's Margaret Love and her damned experiments. In the artwork right here where you see their minds melding, you're seeing these bats and Margaret Love. You're seeing Al Simmons gun people down. You're seeing Bruce Wayne's parents being shot. And it's very interesting. It looks a lot like uh, DC vampire killers where Batman has turned into a vampire himself. And it's it's just very nice, all right? Tom McFarlane's artwork is super great, especially on this segment where you see Spawn and Batman's head looking in different directions with uh, just the backgrounds and things like that. It just is very pleasing to the eye. It's everything I wanted out of a Spawn and Batman comic book when it comes to art. Maybe not the story, but at least the artwork is good. And Spawn says, do you get it now? And Batman says, yes, I do. I know you're a little thick, but do you understand what she is and what we have to do? And Batman looks down and he says, yes. Now get in my head, you twit. And you see them standing there in the alleyway. Spawn has now healed Batman, brought him back from death, and he says, nothing I'd rather do. It's not a very nice place. You ever think about getting a little bit of help? He's actually like, man, Batman, you're kind of, I'm from hell, all right? And I'm, I'm more mentally strong than you. All right, you, you're a little, you're a little loosey-goosey, and I would agree, Batman in this is a little off hinge. But Batman just basically tells him to shut up once he says, I can't take the presence of a dead man. It's my worst fear. And from here, you get the most badass pinup you've ever seen of Spawn and Batman, both just like lunging down from the city. They're both just like, if I can put my legs in the right position, they're both just like, yeah! <laughs> With their giant 60-foot capes behind him off in the wind, it's a it's a wonder how these don't get snagged on any buildings and actually end up killing them both by being accidentally smashed up against a skyscraper. There's actually a variant cover of a newer uh, Batman and Superman comic where you actually see their capes. It's the Tom McFarlane style where their capes are just billing crazy, but they're actually like wrapped around their faces and their entire bodies and they're kind of like struggling to get out of it. And I thought that was just so hilarious. So enjoying this image, I thought it was absolutely great and I love it when comics actually kind to look at themselves and laugh. But suddenly we are greeted to the ship of Margaret Love. And she says, distinguished colleagues, honored guests, my dear, dear friends, God bless you all. When I was just a little girl, I saw the sadness and suffering around me, and I decided to dedicate every hour of my life to healing the pain of our troubled planet. As years passed, an aching emptiness filled my soul, a vast, hopeless black hole. And everybody's kind of drinking this punch, and it actually says that there's no alcohol in this, but there is something that makes people a little more subjective to persuasion. It actually also says the president isn't quite here yet, and Margaret Love is just going on her speech and everybody's enjoying her silky, smooth voice. 
For every mouth we fed, there were millions still hungry. For every mind we turned to love and joy, there were nations of slaves to bigotry and hatred. It all seemed pointless, impossible. Truly, how can anybody heal the world? A sympathetic sob from the Attorney General, low murmuring of sad agreement from a senator. Then one day, an epiphany like a lightning bolt, it struck me. All the confusion and complications fell away. It's all so simple, so obvious. The problem is people. And the Vice President nods. He says, yes, people suck. People, people are not good. People, sweating, farting, meat-eating, land-destroying, cruel, stupid, murderous people. People sprawling across the planet, cluttering its natural perfection with endless flesh, countless factories, diners, mini-malls, and toxic waste dumps and concentration camps. And suddenly this giant steel door opens up from the top of the ship. And as you see as she's making the speech down below, you see a giant mass of military items from artillery, rocket launchers, more cyborg robots, all these different things. And Margaret Love once again says, as the problem is people. We stand at the brink of a great destiny, my friends. We have a glorious opportunity to usher in the new world. A world free of pain, fear, and war, and crime, and all other evils of human willfulness. And all it will take is a war that will grow and grow until the fire is everywhere around us. Then, when the fires have died, our historic work will truly begin. Using a trinity of methods, therapy, technology, and force, we will offer freedom from choice to every living soul. We will free the world. We will will heal the world, and everybody applauds, they've all been drinking a bit of the Kool-Aid, if you know what I'm saying, and they're all just agreeing, they don't see what's below her, they don't quite realize that what she's talking about is basically killing all the scum of the earth and only leaving the people that are willing to change alive. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty out there. Now meanwhile, you actually get the scene of Batman, and I'm pretty goddamn sure this is Batman snapping somebody's neck, alright, and it's, it's... Somebody believe me! Somebody believe me that the Batman is a straight up murderer, a serial killer, alright? When nobody's looking, when we're not looking at these panels, he's not holding back. He's ripping these people's spines out, Sub-Zero style. And Spawn is in his head once again, he says, Move it, Batman, you're taking too long with the guards, just leave them alone. This is fucked up. You're breaking their bones, my man. And Batman's just like, what the devil are you doing back in my head? I thought we should coordinate our efforts, and this seemed like the best way, alright? And Batman just kind of being a dick once again, I mean, he really is just a straight up asshole in this. He says, just follow my lead, boy. I've been at this a few years longer than you have, and I'm a whole lot smarter than you. From all indications, you're dumber than Clark. Another funny moment in this, referencing some other comic books, and Spawn is like, who the hell is Clark? And uh, Batman just tells me, you know, don't worry about it. This is a man that is constantly uh, getting in my way, you know? I'm always having to save his ass, and not the way, not the other way around. And they breach the bottom of this boat, they see all these military items below them, and they both decide that they both just, they need to destroy this equipment as best they can, and suddenly you get this scene of Spawn and Batman punching through steel. Now Spawn, he can do this, he has his chains, and Batman actually makes a little quip about his chains. He says, you're a blunt instrument, kid, so go ahead, kick all the noise you want. Though it's a wonder you can even move around with all those stupid chains. And I'm just like, these chains are moving him around across from the city. They can literally rip the hearts out of enemies, alright? They're way more effective than your man-made technology, Batman. Just, just shut up. Batman is so unlikable in this comic, it is absolutely ridiculous. But they're punching this equipment, exploding everything down here. I gotta say, in none of these panels does it show Batman with the power glove on, so I don't know how he's actually punching through robots and things like that. It doesn't really make sense, but for the sake of the story, we're just gonna assume that he is still amped up from the juices of the power gauntlet. And as Batman is destroying all this stuff, Spawn gets a look at Margaret Love and he decides, you be careful, man. You be nice and sweet and careful. That woman's out to end everything and I'm stopping her and I don't care if it kills me all over again. And Spawn pulls out these two giant guns and as he's pointing at Margaret Love, getting ready to make the kill shot, Batman tries to speed in front of him in order to stop this. He says, no, you fool. She doesn't have to die. And Spawn looks at him and says, why not? And Batman literally, it says he can't come up with the reason why. So basically, this just happens anyways. This lady's a demon. So whatever, we'll let Batman break his vows, I guess. And Spawn fusing his hell powers together, he turns this gun into this giant, huge contraption that inevitably stabs Margaret Love right through the chest and she is finally dying, all right? This old, deceitful demon. Be gone, demon! Get Get your ass out of here! I don't know what's going on. She is dead, and she's saying, my dreams, all my dreams, better world. And she pulls out this trinket with her last dying breath, and you see a button on the back of it, and
and she pushes it and suddenly this nuclear bomb is flying off into the sky. Batman and Spawn see this and they're saying it's headed straight for Manhattan, right for the center of the city. And Batman's just telling Spawn, you know, you have to do something. He calls him a twit again and Spawn actually is getting very sick of this. He says, bailing you out and I've got to put up with this abuse? Hold on to your guts, Batboy. This is gonna suck. And you see this giant green orb enveloping them in both. A surge of hell power. Teleportation. It's the worst. Batman and Spawn are ripped to atoms. Ripped to atoms. Shredded. Rebuilt. And regurgitated from the ether to the side on a speeding Soviet missile that promises the death of millions of New Yorkers everywhere. Batman's hands stop shaking. They have to. His mind clears. It has to. And I actually do like this how Batman can hone in his skills no matter what's going on around him. He knows that if he doesn't calm down, he's not going to be able to do what he wants to do this entire time. And he says, it's a mess. A redundant circuitry. And Spawn looking at this mess of cords realized, you know, I used to be in the army. I know how to defuse bombs. I've seen these. He says, watch it. I know this model. That's not a redundancy. It's a trick. Touch it wrong and everybody dies. And Batman turns around to him and he looks at him with total disdain. And he says, I won't touch it wrong. And don't you touch my cape ever. Nobody touches my cape. Even that bastard Superman who's always getting in my way. All right, he's getting in my way. And the book itself says genius at work. A mind so brilliant it might have revolutionized the field of physics. Hands so skillful they could have served a concert pianist or a safe cracker. Batman. Detective, vigilante, savior. And after Batman's done being a total narcissist, he actually does defuse this bomb. And he says, that's it, it's dead, get us out of here. And suddenly Spawn teleports them back into the alleyway with all the homeless men, the place where he resides. The missile crashes down into the Manhattan River and everything is saved, all right? Everything went as planned, everything went good. And Batman and Spawn are just sitting there, you know, they're conversing. Batman says, your methods are revolting. Your disrespect for human life is detestable. Your lack of discipline is nothing short of embarrassing. We'll meet again. And Spawn says, you better hope we don't. I could have you for breakfast, and if you step on my turf again, I will. And once again, Batman looks at him and he says, I don't have the power in hand to bring you down right now, boy, but I'll get it. And we'll meet again. And once again, Spawn is getting fed up with this. You know, they just saved the entire city of New York together. He doesn't know why Batman is such an asshole. And he really is in this, alright? This is not the Batman that we know from all these other great Batman comic books where he's like a cold, calculating, very humble man who just wants to save life, alright? That's really all Batman's ever cared about. But Frank Miller's version of him, I don't know if he's making fun of him or if it's just kind of how Frank Miller writes characters in Sin City, but it is just absolutely hilarious. Uh, Batman is such an unlikable character in this. I mean, you can like him because he is such a dick in this, but overall, it's just like, oh my god, man, this guy's literally like a brat. He's a man child. He's, he really is the boy who couldn't get over his dead parents and is now just a little screwed up, if you will. But he'll never admit that. <laughs> but Spawn says, would you just knock it off for just one second? You and me, we just saved the whole city. Maybe the whole world. And when the chips were down, we wound up on the same team. And neither of us could have pulled this off alone. What do you say we just bury the hatchet? Batman pulls out one of his batarangs and he says, bury this bitch. <laughs> he doesn't say bitch, but he does say bury this. And he hurdles a fucking batarang right into Spawn's forehead for no reason, just to be a dick. This man is from hell, so luckily it doesn't really do anything besides, you know, make him bleed and you get this cool, like, pinup or whatever. But the fact that he did this after Spawn was literally like, hey, let's just do our thing, all right? And you would you would assume that this is also against Batman's code. I don't know why he has batarangs other than cutting rope and, like, cutting people's shoelaces so they trip or whatever, but uh, he's, he's planted this right in the dome piece of Spawn. And I gotta say, the artwork for that is very cool. Just a nice little crossover piece seeing Spawn with a batarang stuck in his forehead. But that is the end of the book, all right? Just such a weird, wacky story, this entire thing. Uh, you get some other really good pinups and things like that that I really enjoyed. Just another iteration of Spawn and Batman looking as badass as they possibly could. It's like they're taking a photo shoot together. And then probably the coolest one is the last page where you see Spawn using his powers with his chains wrapping around it and Batman uh, below him with all his bats and stuff like that. Just floating around him. But yes, everybody, this has been Spawn and Batman, the very first crossover ever. I really hope you enjoyed it. I had such a fun time making this video. Uh, this was honestly just a very fun read. Like I said at the beginning, this isn't exactly like a super good comic book, but it is just flat out fun, all right? The only things I would change is I would make Spawn and Batman maybe hate 
like make one tussle. I would eliminate all the bickering with each other, the uh, literal five-year-old playground insults of just calling each other punks and saying, I'm gonna rip you in half, I'm gonna rip you in half. That part, it just put me off a little bit. Other than that, like I said, just a very, very fun read. I think seeing Frank Miller's version of Spawn in Batman is very cool. Just his writing style and things like that. I would very be interested in uh, checking out Sin City. Just to see if there is, like, if I can tell that this was his writing, if I didn't already know it was Frank Miller. And then Todd McFarlane's artwork is always such a beauty. Uh, in the next one, uh, the art styles are very different with Batman Spawn War Devils. It's a lot more crude, actually. And I actually don't think... I, I don't know if that one is Todd McFarlane drawing it. I think it actually might be a couple different people, but it actually has to do with Roanoke, the missing city, and like, it's very, very interesting. So I would pick these up yourselves if you are a collector. These are very cool. They're starting to get a little harder to find, but you can still find them for about 10 bucks a piece. Yes, just incredibly fun. I would give Batman and Spawn I'll give it, I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10, alright? It's above average, it's not the greatest thing, but it is a hell of a lot of fun to read. Um, I think the dialogue is just a little bit whack, I think Spawn isn't done as well as he could be, and I think Batman's actual character and personality is botched just a little bit, just by his brattiness. But it is a very funny take, especially when it comes to Alfred, just trying to give him some fucking chamomile tea just to calm his nerves, you know? Trying to get him to take off his cowl and things like that, and Batman's just like, no, no! Absolutely not. <laughs> He's just like, I am this man. Leave me alone, Alfred. And Alfred just kind of like, just like, just, just get married already, all right? I just want to take care of your kids, not fucking stitch up your goddamn soldier every night. We need a Batman comic where just him and Alfred get in like a domestic dispute or something, all right? They have that final fight. They finally break up and Alfred moves on to another superhero. Maybe he goes and helps Robin, all right? But depending on which Robin it is, he's not much better. You have the, the Tim Drake Robin who uh, died and eventually became Red Hood and now just kind of straight up kills people. They are bad, but he does just, you know, he shoots them in the face, all right? You don't shoot a man in the face. <laughs> and then you have Dick Grayson who goes on to become Nightwing and uh, he's, he's a little better. He's got more of a mortal compass. But yes, everybody, this has been Spawn and Batman. This is by far one of the longer videos, but I had to have fun with it. I had to go through the whole story so we could all enjoy that together. And hopefully when I edit this, it comes out very fun, very watchable. Uh, hopefully we can get this one past 100 views. I hope we had two videos get one get to 100 over 100 views and the other one get up to like 80 and I gotta say that felt so good to actually have that happen. So I'm glad we're seeing a spike. So all you new people who got around to the end. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I have so much fun making these videos. I know there's like Comic Explains and uh, Vanity Comic and there's a whole bunch of people who do a really good job, but I'm, I hope you're seeing that I'm doing this a little bit different. It's more of a story time thing rather than like a fact giver or a review or something like that. You know, I'm just trying to have fun with you guys and tell some interesting stories. And I think I got some very interesting ones coming up whenever I get around to doing this massive collection. I just got a whole thing of Clive Barker and whatnot. But I'm gonna cut myself off there. Once again, everybody, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it so much. If you did enjoy, please like or comment or subscribe. Do whatever you can to help my baby, baby channel. Go follow me on Twitter. Go follow me on Instagram. Go follow me on TikTok. Any of these things would be more than acceptable. So, without ado, Spawn and Batman by Frank Miller and Todd McFarlane. Two of the greats of the comic book industry. Uh, the founder of Image Comics itself. Such a great company. They give so many people good chances to tell just awesome stories, whether it's superheroes or not, and I gotta appreciate that. I really try to give myself a good variety when it comes to these comics. But yes, everybody, I will see you again on the next episode. Eventually, I will get to the next Spawn and Batman thing. And just before we go, I do want to say there is a new Spawn and Batman crossover coming this December. I'm insanely, insanely excited about it. And I hope they make it a little more serious. I hope Spawn and Batman are more acquainted with each other and aren't, like, fighting and bickering the whole time. But uh, we'll see how that turns out. But, everybody, have yourself a fantastic night. And thank you again so much for watching. See y'all later.